We're here with Deborah Melvitt, who is one of two Teachers of the Year for the Sacramento City Unified School District. Thanks for joining us. Well, welcome. Thanks for having me. Well, tell us a little bit about where you teach and, and what you teach. I teach at Arthur A. Benjamin Health Professions High School, which is a small public high school for grades 9 through 12. We only have, now we have juniors, and I teach medical science. And the main idea of the school is to get kids who are interested in health and medicine out into the community to work on, on their career goals. Okay, so what all do you teach? What, what courses? I actually teach uh, medical science 10th grade, and they have to take a medical science class besides their regular science classes, and that's a mixture of anatomy and physiology, medical terminology, and career skills. And I also help, I'm also one of the workplace coordinators that help students go out and do job shadows at hospitals, do field trips, hopefully internships, and community service. So you're able to teach students um, kind of career skills, but they're still in high school, so they get to kind of get a, get a taste for the professions. Exactly. So they start out all wanting to usually be a veterinarian or a pediatrician, and then they learn about all the other careers because they get exposed to that. And we have a lot of people from the industry come into the school too and talk with them. So you build a relationship with, with the, the health communities Absolutely. as well. Absolutely. We have many partners with all the hospitals, blood source, other places. So tell me about what you do in your classroom. Uh, what do you do to inspire your students and what are some of the things that you teach them? Well, one of the things which is great about healthcare and teaching that is there's so many topics and ones they're interested in. And so, because a lot of it's very relevant. Um, I teach ones that focus on projects, mainly the ones lately have been alternative medicine, workplace injuries, veterinary medicine. And most kids can relate something about healthcare, whether it's from their families or them, their own selves. So usually they're interested, and we do a lot of debates. We, again, do community service. Um, and then they do projects that they actually present to the community, or we have people from the healthcare world come in and, and grade them. So what do you enjoy about teaching, especially in this specific area? Oh, every topic comes up. And just listening to their ideas and their philosophies about anything from um, drug abuse to autism research to, um, again, alternative medicine. So what I love is just hearing the kids try to problem solve and wrestle with bioethics, philosophical problems. So I, I just I love doing discussions with them. Now, there seems to be a real emphasis now on career and technical education, mm -hmm. where students are in high school and they're taking high school courses, but it's gearing them toward a profession. Right. Uh, what's your feeling on that, on that, on that renewed focus? I like it because it makes the world relevant to the kids. It doesn't matter if they don't end up going into a health or medical career because it can make them great healthcare consumers. Um, they discover a vast array of jobs, and so I, I just think then they're more motivated. Um, the other thing, though, is it connects them to um, people in the community so they can hopefully even get jobs pretty soon or internships. And the other thing is they get em employee skills. So beyond just academics, they, I mean, they're meeting adults every day. We have them visit in the classroom. So they're learning about, you know, simple things like shaking hands to being on time so that will make them a good employee. But we're also very much towards um, college or career. But you're preparing them for, for either or. Right. We, yes. Um, actually, our main goal is to have every kid be prepared to go to college, but also if they want to work right out of high school, they'll also have skills for that. Is it encouraging to you that, that there is more of a renewed focus on, on not just getting the child through high school with enough credits to get to a college, mm -hmm. but giving, giving that child a focus? Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, I've got students who have done volunteer work now at UC Davis Mind Institute. Um, they're, they're creating their own community runs to raise money for research. So I, I think it's, it's exciting because it just gets beyond just the traditional classroom. Speaking of your classroom, what kind of challenges do you face on a daily basis? Yeah. Oh, the usual ones. I mean, high school kids are high school kids. Um, actually, though, discipline isn't a huge problem. But, you know, you have kids who have a lot of problems, you know, personal problems, social problems. Um, and then academics, too. I've got the, the full range of kids who are from English learners, um, low skills, to very gifted students. So a challenge is to try to meet all those demands to help the slower learners and also have things that the ones who are ready to almost take college classes, that they're getting prepared for that. 
Well, tell me about some of the rewards that you get from, from seeing how the students progress. Well, what's that like? Oh, it's great. I mean, the, one of the best things is they'll tell me something about they saw with their family in the hospital, and they were able to tell their family about what a certain medical terminology word was. Um, I also have a club, Health Occupation Students of America, where the students have gone in state competition. One of our students became a state advisor, and they went on to national competition in medical reading. Um, and, uh, you know, but it's the little things. I mean, really just seeing them finally get something and also that they're worthwhile when they have an opinion. I think that's important in the classroom too. So what inspired you to be a teacher? How did you get to this point? I wasn't one of the ones that wanted to when I was very young, but I, I liked um, health and medicine, especially women's health issue. My father's a physician, so I have a lot of uh, medical things in the family. And I started working at clinics and I wanted to focus more on prevention and helping people not get diseases or unplanned pregnancies, whatever. And so I got into the classroom then to teach about healthy behaviors for prevention. Now, do you find some of your students inspiring you? Oh, all the time, mm -hmm. <laughs> all the time. <laughs> I mean, um, I mean a, a simple thing as two students who gave blood last year who were petrified of needles and they wanted to do it and they were shaking like a leaf and I said they didn't have to, and they did it, and they were crying, but afterwards they felt tremendous. I mean, their bravery, they, they try new things, they tough things out all the time, whether it's a physical illness they have themselves or things they do for their families. Now, you, you teach students from kind of all walks of life. Mm -hmm. are, are, how do you reach out to, and connect with those students are, who um, maybe need more inspiration than others? What, any special tricks or, or how do you, how do you, what's your approach? No, it's, it's, there's no real special trick. I think it's all about relationships, you know, it's just having them learn to trust you. Um, again, listening to them and seeing that, hearing about their world and their world view, because it's not always my own. Um, having that mutual respect and, and trusting them to get out in the community to take them places. Sometimes they've never, you know, been on certain field trips. They've never gotten to go talk to a nurse or a doctor except when they're at the doctor's office. So a lot of it is, is believing in them, you know, and, and taking risks with them. And a lot of these students who go through the program um, really think that maybe medicine is for them. Some of them do, but they're learning. Some of them definitely want to be doctors, and some of them are learning about, you know, psychology, about allied health careers, so that they may not, maybe they'll be a medical writer. Um, so definitely they're learning a bunch of different ones, and some won't, but that's okay, but they're learning to be good healthcare consumers. Now, are there some teachers in your past uh, who have been pretty inspirational to you? And, and tell us about that. Sure. Um, um, from main ones who got me into, I would say, the health and medicine were mainly in college, but um, in high school, actually it was my art teacher, and he was just a very kind person. And so I was somebody who got scared easily in class. He wasn't like that. Um, and so if I'm going to model after anybody, it's probably the teachers who you didn't jump down your throat <laughs> and yell at you. <laughs> so, um, but you hadn't always me. thought that when you were even when you were little that someday I'd be a teacher. You didn't? No, I thought I'd be a, a writer or a veterinarian. <laughs> so um, no, I didn't. It was actually not until I got into learning about women's health and got into explaining things to my friends and to patients at my dad's office that I was much better at explaining things than putting a needle into somebody's arm, which I have done before, but you don't want me to do that, really. Yeah. No, I think we'll wait for that. Yeah. So let me ask you this finally. What would you say to those folks out there who are considering teaching as a profession, who maybe aren't quite sure, but you know, what would you say to kind of inspire them to consider it? Um, well, one thing I'd be really honest, I mean, I think, it, I mean, I work every Sunday afternoon for about six hours on grading papers, getting ready. I work very long hours. Um, but the rewards is I can have kids on a Friday afternoon talking about anything in the classroom, talking about politics, religion, bioethics, and it's just so fun to be with them, and they're just loving and kind, and that's huge. I mean, who gets to always do that? Let's learn from young people. So if you're willing to be a hard worker, but you get great rewards being around the students. Okay, well, thank you for your time. We've been thank speaking you. with uh, Deborah Melvitt, who is one of two Teachers of the Year for 2008 for the Sacramento City Unified School District. Thanks for joining us.